Hello everyone, in this video we're going to get an early look at the new interface changes and features that Microsoft have been working on for Windows 11. This is not the final version, Microsoft is still in the early days of the development and we're going to see more as the company begins shipping test builds of the new operating system. In addition to this video, I have also created other videos showing how the new installation process looks like and some other features that the company has been working on for Windows 11. I will be leaving those links in the description and I hope you watch them. Okay, so let's have a closer look at the new interface of Windows 11. Perhaps the most important visual change that you will see in this new version is the new start menu, which has the same design as the one that Microsoft has been working on on the now cancelled Windows 10X that uses traditional icons and removes the live tiles. And as you can see, the menu now floats above the taskbar. The menu is divided into three main sections. The top shows the pin items and in here you can have multiple pages, which you can scroll to get to them or you can click the dots that indicates a new page on this section. From the top right, you can access all the apps, similar to the All Apps menu on Windows 10. The recommended section, which is at the middle, towards the bottom, works like timeline and it shows the most recent items, including for apps, folders, and files. You can also click the More button, and that will take you to a list with additional recommended files that you can pick up where you left off. And at the bottom, that's where we're going to find what used to be the left rail on the Start menu for Windows 10. And in here, that's where you're going to find the profile menu and the power options. By default, you're not going to see any quick access to folders. And if you want to modify what appears here, you will need to do that from the star settings page. And then you will choose what items you want to appear. As you can see, now we have documents, downloads, and we'll remove the settings. But in my case, I like to have quick access to File Explorer and Settings. You probably also noticed that we have an updated taskbar that aligns all the elements in the center. However, you can always access the taskbar settings to change the alignment to the left so you can access the start menu and all the applications like it used to do on Windows 10 and on previous versions. Furthermore, you probably also seen that when you right click the taskbar, we no longer have the context menu with a lot of the options that we used to see in the past. So now it's just one options that opens directly into the taskbar settings. And all the options that you used to have available on the right click context menu for the taskbar will be available on this page. In addition, on Windows 11, we're also getting a new start button and a new icon for search, which has an interface that has been slightly updated. As you can see, now we have the search box in the top and it's no longer available on the taskbar. But you actually don't have to open search to start a search. For example, you can just simply open the start menu and then just start typing to get to search. Furthermore, if you click the options menu, that will give you access to different options, including to manage your accounts, out of different accounts, jump to the settings option and into the indexing options. Then there is a new button for widgets, which is a new experience on Windows 11. And this is basically a new version of the news and interest experience that we have already since Windows 10. However, the new experience appears from the left and it provides the time and takes a bigger part of the screen. Windows 11 still includes a task view button, but it has been updated and it docks all the virtual desktop at the bottom of the screen and it removes timeline from the operating system.
One thing that is consistent on Windows 11 is the new render corners that you will find across experience, including the start menu, taskbar when highlighting items and tooltips, and on action center, when you see the buttons and the notifications, and as you can see in File Explorer and other modern and legacy applications. Furthermore, we're getting fresh new animations. For example, for maximizing and minimizing applications, and even when resizing a window. Also, we're getting new animations on the taskbar, as I don't know if you noticed, but if I minimize, you can pay attention to the File Explorer icon, how that jumps up, up and down. And now we have a dot that indicates that that application on the taskbar is running. Furthermore, let's say that we want to remove some of the items on the taskbar. Let's say if we turn off task view, just pay attention to this icon and you will see how it comes back. Although Windows has included a dark and a light theme, I just wanted to show you how these modes look on Windows 11. So far, we've been looking into the light theme and this is how the experience looks with the dark theme, which I think looks pretty awesome. And this, this is how the experience looks like with a different color. Furthermore, Windows 11 also comes with different default themes, including a light one, which is the one that comes enabled by default. Then we have the dark one, which simply switches to the dark theme and it uses a different background image. Then we have the glow. Captured motion, sunrise, and flow. On Windows 11, Microsoft is also updating the Snap Assist, and now the Maximize button will show you something called Snap Layouts that gives you a visual aid on how to snap an application, and different layouts that you can use will be based on the size of your monitor. So basically, this is the same as using the Windows key and the arrows to snap a window but now we have it on the Maximize button. And this is not just available on File Explorer, but in all applications that has a Maximize button. In addition, when hovering an app on the taskbar, the system will show the snap layout that is part of that application. For example, we have open Microsoft Edge and we can switch to the application or directly into the snapping. So for example, we can select Microsoft Edge or we can select the group where that application is snapped. So let's say if I switch to the settings app and then I want to go back to the same group of windows, I'll just hover over the app and I click and I switch directly into that snap that I had before. If you don't like these features, you can easily enable or disable either one of those by checking this option to disable the snap layout on, on the maximize button. As you can see now, I don't see it anymore, but if I enable it, we see snap layouts again. In the same way, if we disable grouping for snap layouts, when we hover over the app, we no longer see the groups. In addition to snap layouts, Microsoft is also adding more ways to help you manage Windows on this new version of the operating system. Now, for example, when we go to the display settings under multiple displays, we now have an option to let Windows 11 remember the window locations based on the monitors, and that comes enabled by default. And also there is a new option that lets you decide whether or not you want to minimize Windows when a monitor is disconnected from the computer. Windows 11 also includes a bunch of new sounds, and these are a lot better than the legacy sounds. 
So let me see if I can record some of the audio so you can hear it yourself. And in addition to all the changes, you can also see that we have a new scroll bar for the legacy experience of Windows. Also, this new version includes an updated version of the Windows Ink experience that now lets you pin virtually any app on the menu. In this late release of Windows 11, I also noticed that the Archive Apps feature is back. We've seen this in the past, but then Microsoft removed it from the developer bills. But this is a feature that is meant to archive apps that you don't use to save space and internet data. The next time you try to open the app, it will connect to the internet and download the full version again from the Microsoft Store. But this is, of course, as long as the app is available on the store. Other changes that you're going to find on this version of Windows is that you will no longer find the tablet mode unless the operating system is running on a tablet. And for those wondering, yes, you can activate Windows 11 with a Windows 7 key. So if you have one laying around or if you, or if you want to upgrade Windows 7 to Windows 11, don't quote me on this, but it's likely that you will be able to activate. And that's pretty much all that's new on this leaked version of Windows 11 when we're talking about all the design changes and features that we haven't seen before. Remember to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I just hope this video was informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.